a string of small tropical islands somewhere between the Philippines and Hawaii. The state is known for its intact natural beauties, the amazing rock islands and its unique underwater nature. But Palau has not always been so intact. It was one of the major World War II theaters and nature became severely damaged. On some islands vegetation had completely gone and polluting ship and airplane wrecks littered the seabed. However, Palau is now one of the leading countries in conservation efforts. Almost 60% of the marine environment is protected and underwater nature has recovered magnificently. In 2009, Palau became the first shark sanctuary in the world and in 2012, UNESCO added Palau's rock islands to the World Heritage List. Our team follows a small group of experienced divers who explore the beauties of this naturalist's haven. Hello, my name is Megan Collins. I'm the cruise director here on the Palau Siren. I have been having an absolute blast. We checked off all the big stuff list. More gray reefs, I think everybody was bored by the end. White tips, just swimming around you almost every single dive. Turtles, I think we lost count on this trip. Hawksbill, green turtles, and anything else that swims into your path. Wow. Palau currents are unpredictable and not for the faint-hearted. But lots of current means lots of sharks. There are at least 13 different shark species in Palau, the most dominant being grey reef sharks and white tips. And then of course, Palau is not just about the big stuff. We had our leaf fish, we had our mandarin fish, we had frog fish, lots of nudibranch everywhere, so a little bit of something for everybody. The fun thing for everyone to discover is Palau is not just about the diving. Some folks took advantage and went to the Pelelu land tour, learned a little bit about the history of Pelelu and Palau itself from the Second World War. And then of course we continued that underwater where we got to actually dive on Orange Beach, uh, see some of the cables and the chains left over from the actual attacks, as well as some of the World War II wrecks. Dozens of Japanese warships were sunk in Palau waters, as for example, the Irumaru. On March 22, 1944, on her way from the Philippines to Palau, a torpedo launched from a US submarine hit the cargo ship. In shallow depths, at only 15 meters, lies the wreck of a Japanese seaplane. It is a lightly armed three-seater reconnaissance plane. The plane probably took off from a nearby Koror Air Base when the engine stalled and it crashed into the lagoon. Just as exciting are blue holes situated on the shallow reef top. Blue holes are also called vertical caves. They are roughly circular steep old tunnels and got their name from the dramatic contrast between the dark blue deep waters of their depths and the lighter blue of the shallows around them. Blue holes were formed during the ice ages, when sea levels were as much as 100 to 120 meters lower than at present day. After the ice ages, water levels rose and submerged the caves and entrances to the blue holes. Jellyfish Lake, another absolute must do in Palau. It's a very, very unique environment. Um, there are five lakes in Palau that have these almost non-stinging jellyfish in them. The main reason you cannot scuba dive is of course the damage the bubbles can do to the jellyfish. But also, if you go deeper than 12 meters, the water itself becomes toxic. Good reason not to scuba dive and just do very shallow free diving. Also endemic to Palau, uh, right here in the area of Koror, is the Nautilus, a very alien looking cephalopod. They do come up to diveable depths, and this trip we had some really lucky divers, and uh, we got to spend the whole hour looking at these creatures that normally you'd have to go in a submarine to 300, 400 meters to see them in their natural habitat. The Nautilus is remotely related to the squid and octopus. They are often called living fossils, since they have remained unchanged for millions of years. They normally come up to the reef to mate and lay eggs. 
Thereafter, they descend again into the abyss. And then, of course, a very special dive to end the trip on is the Chandelier Caves, a living cave system. All around the world, nature is being threatened by the onslaught of mankind. It is commendable that the state of Palau is trying to stem the tide in its territory. Thanks to far-reaching conservation measures by its government, nature has recovered remarkably well, and Palau thereby stands as one of the most impressive role models for other countries. Music